Now let me show you an important anatomical and surgical landmark called the anatomical snuff box. This is the region of the anatomical snuff box. So we can see the anatomical snuff box in our own hand on the lateral aspect of the between the junction with the forearm and the hand and this is the location. So let's take a look at the boundaries of the anatomical snuff box. The lateral boundary of the anatomical snuff box is formed by two tendons and we can see both the tendons here. This is the abductor pollicis longus and this is the extensor pollicis brevis. I told you in this case the abductor pollicis longus is by fit and extensor pollicis brevis. So the lateral boundary is the same as the contents of the first compartment which we mentioned in the beginning. Then let's come to the medial boundary of the anatomical snuff box. The medial boundary is formed by this tendon. This is the extensor pollicis longus. So extensor pollicis longus tendon was in the third compartment which we had mentioned in the beginning. So the anatomical snuff box is bounded laterally by the tendons of the first compartment and medially by the tendon of the third compartment. Through the anatomical snuff box is formed by four bones. One we can feel here that is the radial stylet process. Then deep we have the scaphoid. Then we have the trapezium and then we have the base of the first metacarpal. So in sequence these are the bones which form the flow. And this is bridged over by fascia which has been removed and coming to the contents of the anatomical snuff box. The most important content that we can see here and we have dissected it out, this is the radial artery. So let's take a look at the radial artery on the forearm. This is the origin of the radial artery from the cubital fossa and we can see that the radial artery is running again under the cover of the brachioradialis. It runs all the way down and here in front of the lower end of the radius is where we can feel the radial pulsation. And from here, the radial artery then goes under the tendons. And here it comes to the anatomical snuff box. And when I exert traction here, you can see that it is moving here. In the anatomical snuff box, it was following a slightly tortuous course and we have dissected it out. And then it comes out of the snuff box and we can see the course of the radial artery here. And then it pierces through first dorsal interosseous muscle and we can see it piercing. And then it comes to the palm and here it becomes the deep palmar arch. So this is one important content of the anatomical snuff box. The next important content of the snuff box is this nerve. Which, this is the superficial branch of the radial nerve or the cutaneous branch of the radial nerve which crosses over and comes to the dorsum of the hand. And what is not visible here is that the beginning of the cephalic vein also goes across the anatomical snuff box. So these are the contents of the anatomical snuff box. Now let's come to a few clinical correlations pertaining to the extensor tendons and the snuff box. There's something called decoherbens stenosing tenovaginitis, also known as washerwoman's hand, also known as the blackberry hand or texting hand. When the hand is constantly used in motion, there is a septic inflammation of the tendons within the synovial sheath or within the synovial sheath itself, especially the abductor pollicis longus and the extensor pollicis brevis. And that condition is known as decoherbens stenosing tenovaginitis. And there will be tenderness in the anatomical snuff box. That is one condition. Previously, it used to be seen in washerwomen who used to wash clothes with their hands, but nowadays everybody uses the washing machine. But that's why it is referred to as the blackberry hand because people used to use their mobile phones too much or it's also known as the texting hand. Another important clinical correlation, which is not very common though, is what is known as the bull rider's thumb. The bull rider's thumb actually is a rupture of the radial collateral ligament of the wrist joint, which extends from the radial steroid process to the base of the first metacarpal bone. And when that is torn, those people who ride mechanical bulls that is known as the bull rider's thumb. We can have something known as the skier's thumb, which is actually basically a dislocation of the first metacarpophalangeal joint and a version fracture of the head of the first meta metacarpal, which is actually strictly speaking not in the snuff box but a little distal. Then we can have fracture of the waist of the scaphoid bone, which I told you is one of the bones which form the floor of the snuff box. That happens when the person falls on his hand. And the scaphoid bone is shaped like a boat. And the middle portion is slightly narrow, which is known as the waist of the scaphoid. And it fractures there. When that happens, the scaphoid bone receives blood supply from the radial artery, from the palmar carpal branches of the radial artery. And it goes, the arteries go from distal to proximal. 
So when there's a fracture of the waist of the scaphoid, the proximal portion undergoes avascular necrosis and can lead to non-union and persistent disability. We mentioned two tendons going through the second compartment. The extensive carpi radial is longus and the extensive carpi radial is brevis. They can be the site of what is known as ganglion. Actually, ganglion is nothing but a myxomatous degeneration of the synovial sheath. It is most commonly seen in relation to these tendons, extensive carpi radial is longus and brevis, though it can be seen in relation to other extensive tendons and rarely in my clinical experience I have seen them even in relation with the flexor tendons. That is known as ganglion and this ganglion is very difficult to treat. Even after surgical excision it has a tendency to recur. The best way to test the extensor tendons is ask the patient to dorsiflex the wrist against resistance that is to test the extensors of the wrist and to test for the extensors of the digits we give resistance to the proximal phalanx and ask the patient to extend it and we can see the tendon standing upon the dorsum of the digits. So these are the ways of testing the extensor tendons and the integrity of the nerve supplying that. The brachioradialis tendon gets inserted. This is the brachioradialis and the tendon gets inserted onto the radial stylet process. So just above the lower end of the radius is the narrow tendon and this is the site which is used to elicit brachioradialis reflex which is one of the clinical testing of the integrity of the radial nerve that is called the brachioradialis jerk reflex. So these are some of the clinical correlations pertaining to the extensor tendons and the anatomical snuff box and the compartments. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Dr. Sanjay Sanyal signing out. Have a nice day.